Hello everyone, I'm Jia Mengpu. I am a PhD student at Virginia Tech. And I'm Neil Mungakar, and I'm a PhD student at the University of Michigan. Today we are going to present our study investigating real-world deepfake videos. So before we get started, let's have a quick primer on deepfakes. A deepfake is a synthetic media created or modified using deep generative models. This includes multiple modalities like images, videos, audio, and text. In this work, we are going to focus on deepfake videos, specifically videos where one person's face is swapped onto another. Here are some examples. We see what looks like Tom Cruise doing a coin magic trick and Elon Musk in a casual Zoom meeting. However, these celebrities never actually did what these videos are showing. These are deepfakes where their faces were swapped in. Now let's see how they are created. Well, nowadays they are easy to create, requiring minimal technical expertise. There are several tutorials and open source tools that enable this. Now, many of these tools at their core employ a deep encoder-decoder framework. Let me give you an example. Let's say we want to swap Nicolas Cage's face onto Amy Adams' face. The first step is to gather several face images for both Nicholas and Amy. The second step is to train two autoencoders separately, one for Nicholas and one for Amy. However, both of these autoencoders employ a shared encoder. This ensures that the latent representation output from the encoder disentangles expression from identity. The final step is to do the face swap itself. We will take Amy's face, fade it through the shared encoder, and take the disentangled output representation and fade it through Nicholas' decoder. The result is the swapped face, that is, with Amy's expression but with Nicholas' identity. And with that, we've created a face swap deepfake. But the problem is that such technology can be misused. Deepfakes are now extremely realistic and can pose serious threats. A bad actor can use deepfake to start disinformation campaigns. For example, in early 2020, deepfakes were used to spread propaganda in an Indian election. They can be used against celebrities, showing them doing things they never did. An extreme threat comes in the form of deepfake pornography. This can involve both celebrity and layman, effectively showing people in compromising situations. Fortunately, today we are seeing that both governments and industry are recognizing and taking steps towards addressing the severity of these threats. Researchers have proposed a variety of deepfake detection schemes. In addition to this, the community also produced a variety of deepfake datasets as well. These datasets help us to train and evaluate detection schemes. This table shows the detection performance of existing state-of-the-art schemes, as claimed in the original papers. Each row presents a different scheme. You will see that they are usually trained and tested on the same dataset, claiming high performances of up to 99% success through a variety of metrics like ROC, EUC, accuracy, etc. This is great progress, but these existing studies have been conducted with limited or no knowledge of deepfake videos in the wild. Our work aims to fill this gap in knowledge. We aim to better understand deepfake videos in the wild. These are videos created by the internet community. Our work answers the following questions. First, how popular are deepfake videos in the wild? Are they being viewed by large populations? Second, how are real-world deepfakes different from those created by researchers for existing studies? Third, can existing deepfake detection schemes accurately detect deepfakes in the wild? We conducted a large-scale measurement study of deepfakes in the wild to answer these questions. So let's jump into our methodology for collecting deepfake videos in the wild. Our first step was to build a candidate set of deepfake videos. We do this by searching popular internet platforms using relevant keywords. 
platforms included YouTube, Reddit, and Bilibili, a famous Chinese video hosting platform. Note that we restricted our search to safe fair work content only, and through this first step, we found 1,000 Bilibili videos and videos hosted on almost 200 YouTube channels. In the second step, we use a combination of manual and automated techniques to verify whether the video in question contained face swap content. Some of these techniques included looking for keywords in video metadata and checking for obvious facial warping and distortion artifacts. After filtering out non-deepfake videos, we found over 1,800 deepfake videos, of which over 1,000 were from YouTube and around 800 from Bilibili. These videos comprise our new dataset we call DFW. Now, to the best of our knowledge, our dataset DFW is the largest collection of deepfakes in the wild, spanning content on both YouTube and Bilibili. This includes over 48 hours of content with over 4.8 million frames. And you can see a few video samples below the table. Next, we're gonna get into answering our research questions. So let's start by understanding the growth and popularity of these videos on the internet. On the left, this plot shows the CDF of the number of videos uploaded against their upload date. And we see a steady growth in deepfake content from 2019. We also see a sharp increase in uploads coinciding with the release of certain deepfake generation tools. On the right, this table shows popularity of the videos in terms of views. For YouTube, 69% of videos received over a thousand views, with nearly 3% receiving over half a million. For Bilibili, it was 27% receiving over a thousand views and 0.2% receiving over half a million. But overall, these findings suggest that deepfakes are growing on the internet and are being viewed by large populations. Next, we looked at how our DFW dataset was different from existing datasets. What additional value did it provide? First, let's look at the generation methods used in this dataset. For DFW YouTube, we obtained the generation method for 22% of videos from metadata, and a notable method was Deepface Lab. It's responsible for 90% of videos with known methods, and also likely responsible for 30% of videos with unknown methods, as inferred using a deepfake source attribution tool. Now, Deepface Lab claims to be the most popular deepfake tool and is also known to be used for deepfake pornography. But to the best of our knowledge, no existing datasets use this important method to generate their deepfakes. And our findings indicate a clear mismatch in the methods used by the research community and in the wild. As a consequence, defenses trained on existing datasets might perform poorly when applied to such videos. Next, we looked into video content as a point of difference. First, in all research datasets, every frame in the video contains fake content. In DFW, however, we found many cases where only a fraction of the frames contains fake content. Second, we observed that DFW videos are generally longer than those in existing datasets. And these two features combined can potentially result in more clean content in each video which implies that performing detection at a video level might be problematic. The average decision over many clean frames can produce a false negative. Third, we examined the number of faces per frame. We found 26% of DFW videos contain frames with more than a single face, whereas for all existing datasets, over 92% of videos contain frames with only a single face. This is again problematic as existing detection schemes assume only one face per frame. Given these differences between these datasets, the question arises, will existing detection schemes generalize well to DFW? To this end, we obtained pre-trained models for seven existing defenses, including both supervised and unsupervised schemes. We applied each of them on the DFW dataset and computed the best attainable F1 scores for deepfake detection. Note that higher values are better, and this table shows detection performances of each scheme on the DFW dataset. 
we observe that all the F1 scores do not exceed 77%. The best method is capture forensics. Additionally, precision scores are lower than 69%, which also suggests a large number of false positive misclassifications. So the takeaway is that these state-of-the-art schemes do not generalize well and perform poorly on deepfakes in the wild. It's also worth noting that the best unsupervised approach comes close to the best supervised approach. To improve generalization further, it might help to advance unsupervised methods. Now, an important part is understanding why these methods failed to accurately detect these videos. In the paper, we do more detailed analysis, but one reason was pointing out is the issue of racial bias impacting the best method, capture forensics. We found that the best performing method, capture forensics, was not as successful at catching Asian faces as compared to Caucasian and black faces. In fact, the difference was around 25% in their F1 scores. This isn't an uncommon problem in the visual domain, but it is worth noting that such issues also plague security applications like deepfake detection. So how can we improve these detection schemes? A natural solution is to adapt the classifier to the new unseen dataset domain. A common approach for domain adaptation is to do transfer learning, and that's by fine-tuning the model on a limited set of samples from the target domain. So we adapted the best method, Capsule Forensics, using only 50 videos from the DFW dataset. This is realistic because, in practice, it's unlikely that the defender has access to a large number of fake videos from the target domain. So how well does it work? The best supervised detector improved to over a 90% F1 score performance. And this is great news. Of course, there is still a downside because the defender may have to frequently adapt as new types of deepfake videos emerge. We also investigated another approach to improving performance. We wanted to see how well competition winning models would perform. Now, Facebook recently organized a competition where participants were competing to detect deepfakes from an unseen deepfake dataset. The winner of this competition, a Mr. Selim Seferbikov, released his prize winning model, which we evaluated on DFW. Now, this prize-winning model obtained an 81% F1 score on DFW, outperforming all existing detection schemes. However, domain adaptation still worked 10% better. Nonetheless, this does give some merit to the idea of opening up the deepfake detection problem to the public. We have plenty more detailed evaluation of detection schemes in the paper. This includes evaluating detection schemes on existing academic datasets, evaluating detection performance per deepfake generation method, understanding detection failure via model interpretation schemes, and testing other transfer learning strategies to improve detection performance. We do acknowledge potential limitations of our study. For example, it's likely that there are deepfakes created with generation tools that are not represented in DFW, and it's also likely that there are detection schemes that perform better than the ones we evaluated. As we restricted our analysis to peer-reviewed work for which we could obtain code and pre-trained models. Secondly, some of our analysis included risk-wise breakdown of detection performance. This analysis employed ratio classifiers, which could be biased themselves. We tuned these classifiers for very high precision so as to reduce such bias. Finally, we avoided all non c for work content, including pornography. However, as discussed earlier, deepfake pornography employs the tool DeepFace Lab, which is modestly represented in DFW. With that, we conclude our presentation. The DFW dataset is available as a link shown on screen, and we hope it helps the community take next steps towards solving the deepfake detection problem. And thanks for your time.